overcomer's faith or overcoming faith that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's found there in Mark chapter 9, verses 14 through 18. And I'm going to read to you just for a moment, and then I'm going to let you sit down. The Bible says, And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. That means greeted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. That's a mute spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out. Now listen to this. And they could not. They couldn't do it. What kind of follower of Christ are you? When people come to you, do they come to you and ask you to pray for them because they know that you will do it, that you're going to pray? Are you that kind of follower of Christ? Because that's really what's questioned here. What's questioned here is not the son that is sick. What's questioned here is if God's people can do what God has given you to do. So today I want to talk to you about being an overcomer. How to do that. How to have this faith. Lord Jesus, I love you and I thank you, Father, for loving us. I I thank you, Father, for the testimonies. And Lord, whatever you want here today is what we want. We give this service to you. But Lord, I thank you for the confirming to me. What a wonderful word that is. Confirming to me this morning that this is what you want. Thank you for the prayers. Thank you for the way you've touched people's lives. Father, help us to go forward from this day with this faith, this overcoming faith, this breakthrough faith, that we know you can do anything. We pray all this in the most precious name I know, and that's the name of Jesus and all God's people said. Tell somebody you love them before you sit down there. We have to understand in our lives as Christians, as Christians, some of you may be here today and you're not saved. Well, you're at the right place. You come to the right place. God can do in you what needs to be done. But for those of you that are saved, God has created within us an unstoppable force. What we are, what we have inside of us, the Holy Spirit is unstoppable. And as an unstoppable force, you today and I today should not be these people that we are discouraged all the time about what's happening in our lives. Now look at me. I know God has a word for you this morning. Look at me. Listen. Because what God allows in our lives, whatever it is, listen, He does that for a reason because He wants you to to grow spiritually. He wants you tomorrow to be more than what you are today. Now, I know we look at things like that and we hear things like that and it really don't register, but listen to me. That's what God wants. He wants you to be a better Christian every single day. Now, some of you are here this morning and you're saying to yourself, I've really struggled with this I've not grown in a while I've not and you're and the preacher says something like that and it even makes me feel worse I, I just don't know what I'm going to do sometimes in this Christian life because we are human we have this flesh we live in this world 
The devil is a foe that we have to understand that we contend with, that we have to fight, that we have to understand how to fight him and have this overcomer's faith that we can defeat him. And by the way, folks, look at me. You can defeat him. And it's not you that really defeats him. God has already defeated him. He's done. I mean, he's defeated. But we still contend with him. So the Bible tells us that we have this victory. The Bible tells us that we are overcomers, that greater is he that is in us than what? Y'all smart. Smart. So... Today, I want to ask that question. I want to think about then how can we live this life as overcomers? How can we do this? How does it work, preacher? How in the world do we get there? Well, the only way we get there is by faith. Everybody say those two words with me, by faith. Let's say it again, by faith. By faith we do this. That's the only way. Now, I know we, in a flippant way, throw that word around. But when you come to where you were, and when you come to where Debbie was, and you come to where Nikki is, and where I've been, and you've been, then that word starts to become stronger in your life. Now that's from God, I believe that. That it starts to become stronger in our lives. We want it to work for us. We, we need to know how this faith works works that we can get through this thing we're going through and faith one thing we need to understand faith is unstoppable it cannot be stopped because it is powered by God himself it can't be stopped there's no way we just need to believe we need this morning to be empowered by God and quit trying to empower ourselves there's so many Christians in this day and time try to empower themselves. Oh, if I read more scripture. Oh, if I go to church. Oh, if I sing in the choir. Oh, if I do this, that I'll empower my, myself to be a better Christian. That's not the way it works. The only power you have this morning comes through Jesus Christ, comes through the Holy Spirit. That's all the power that we have. So in Mark chapter 9 through uh, chapter 9 verses 14 through 29, it's just revealing to us the power of faith. He says there in Mark 9:23, now listen to these verses. He says, Jesus said unto him, "If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth." Now that's a faith verse. You need to mark that down. And then he says in Matthew 21:22, and all things whatsoever you ask or shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. How many believe that this morning? These are faith verses that you're going to need one day. You may not need it right now, but you're going to need it. You're going to have to look it up again and read it. You ought to memorize it because it's your power in this thing that you're going through. Uh, uh, John 15, 7 says it this way, talking about overcomer's faith. It says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Now those are from some verses, aren't they? They're powerful. They're strong. It's, an, it's a powerful statement to say these things. Now, I, I don't want you to hear me say today that faith gives us a, the ability to tell God what to do. Because if you don't watch it, the old devil will do that to you. you you'll think you're in charge of God, and by the way, you're not. You're not <laughs> and you never will be. So it doesn't give you, you know, he's not like a genie in the bottle that you can take down off the shelf and just say to him, this needs to be done for me right now, and because I've read these verses, and because you live inside of me, you ought to do it. That's not the way it works. See, that's where we get confused. 
That's the reason you hear people say things like, I prayed about it, but he hadn't done anything about it. He hadn't done anything for me yet. Because they expect just to take him down when they need him and say, do this now. But that's not the way God works. So you need to take that off your list right now. Let's just get that out of the way, all right? Let's just rub that out, that it don't work that way. And it'll help you get back on track. So I reject these teachings, by the way. And I want to tell you that. I want to mark it down right now. I, I, I reject some of these doctrines, you know, that if you just have faith, that, you know, if you just do this and do that, like, you know, speak a word of faith and, you, you know, all your... He, all your sickness will be gone or speak a word of faith, you know, and you'll have all the money you need or speak a word of faith and, and you know, you can, you, you can be a billionaire. I mean, I, I reject that. That's not how God works, man. God doesn't work that way. Now, God can give you anything He wants to give you. He can do anything in the world He wants to do for you. But when it comes to understanding faith and understanding what God can do in your life, God always, Jesus always em emphasizes the power behind the faith. Pa and by the way, there should be some power behind your faith walk. And that power is God. Without it, you have nothing. So mark that down as number two. God has to be there. He has to be working in that. So here in this story, it's clear that Jesus is going to put a huge emphasis on the power of faith. And um, the conditions, I want to say that too, the conditions of this faith. The conditions based upon what this faith can do in your life. How God can move mountains. Some of you have got some big old mountains this morning. And you need to move. You need God to react. You need God to do something. But don't listen. There's conditions behind that faith reacting. That power of God reacting. What is that? Well, we must first of all pray according to the will of God. Did you notice when Nikki came up here this morning and I said, we are praying for healing, but we will take whatever God's will is. Because can I say something to you this morning, and I want you to understand this, we get what He wants to give us. Right? We get what He wants to give us. He may choose total healing. And then He may choose that we are going through some things so that he can help us to flourish and grow and mature and dig in there. So, I believe, though, that faith is unstoppable. It's an unstoppable force when it's empowered by God. So, the question is, how can we have this overcomer's faith this morning or this overcoming faith? How can we have this? Well, there's an example from the life of Christ here, and I, I want to give that to you. We, first of all, we have overcomer's faith by keeping away from interruptions in our lives. A lot of people think they ought to have this faith and think God ought to do this for them and do that for them, but they have all these interruptions in their lives. Now, I'm not talking about just things that happen like, you know, health issues, wealth issues, I'm talking about things we allow to come in our lives. Like a boyfriend that you shouldn't be even going out with. Now, I know preachers don't talk like this anymore, and it's probably going to hurt your feelings. And, or a girlfriend that you know that she's no good for you. You know that. God has told you. It's clear. You know, you know that you don't need to be there, that you don't need to be in that situation. Friends workplaces, whatever it may be. God has warned you, told you, and you've allowed that interruption in your life. It interrupts your faith. 
It interrupts your, your, your total being uh, as a Christian. And you know you need it out. You know that job you took, you didn't take it because you like it. You took it for the money. You work on your job all the time and forget God and don't come to church. Those kinds of interruptions. You're not reading your Bible anymore because you've let things interrupt that. Oh, but I got faith. No, your faith can't be what it needs to be unless you're in tune with God. It can't. God doesn't work that way. So we got to keep away from interruptions. Well, I want to show you something here, and I'm not going to get too far, but I want to show you something here. You see, an overcoming faith will not get sidetracked in, in, in issues of everyday life. Uh, an overcomer's faith will be strong. And, you can, and by the way, let me say why I'm doing this. You can have this. It's not something that you can't have. You can have this. Every one of us can have this strong faith. Uh, we can live this life. As Jesus, he comes down, he has his three closest disciples with him, and they had just experienced, and by the way, most of our interruptions happen when we've experienced something great with God. So his three closest disciples were coming down in this incredible moment on the Mount of Transfiguration. You all know that story. And Jesus had just revealed his glory to Peter, James, and John, and they went from the mountain to the valley. Because usually after you have a breakthrough or you have a, a good moment with God, you're growing strong in God, there always comes that valley, that time that God lets you settle down so he can scrape off the rough edges. So they come off the mountain and they go in the valley. They have a rough time. They come from the glory of heaven and they come back to the attacks of hell. So what are some of the interruptions that Jesus faced here in this story? The first interruption that Jesus faced in this story, now stay with me just a second, was arguing. Did you see it? I want you to look with me right here in Mark 9, 14. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with him. That word means there was a strong uh, uh, subject, they were arguing between each other. Jesus walked down, his disciples walked down from the mountain, and they come right into this arguing. It was just an interruption. By the way, the devil will use anything he can use. He'll use, listen to you, he'll use your family to get you away from being close to God. He'll use your friends. He'll use people at work. He, he, he don't care. He just uses anybody he can to get you off track. So he comes down and he returns and the nine other disciples are there and he finds them arguing with the, with the scribes. You say, well, what were they arguing about? Well, they were arguing because this man brought this boy to the disciples, and they couldn't do anything for him. And the scribes stepped in and said, well, well, what's wrong with you? This little boy's not got any better at all. You're not helping this man's son. And, and you know what? Sometimes we've got to watch out about this arguing thing. You know, at work, when we're arguing over our what we believe. You don't really win anybody by arguing with them. You don't really move anybody by arguing the situation with them. But these disciples, because they couldn't do what they were... And by the way, may I say this? They couldn't do what they were supposed to do. Christian. What God gave them to the power to do, them the power to do. They couldn't do it. 
So instead of explaining or instead of saying about themselves, it's my fault, I'm, I'm not close enough, I'm not where I'm supposed to be with God. By the way, folks, that's a lot of your arguing. You will argue different situations about God because you're not close like you should be. You try to explain yourself and you can't. And so they were arguing about this, and by the way, they couldn't help this kid arguing. They couldn't do nothing for this child arguing between each other. And sometimes we get interrupted in our lives. We're so interested in winning the argument that we forget people are dying and going to hell. So what did Jesus do? Well, the second thing is is amazement. So there was arguing, and then there was amazement. Why were they amazed? Mark 9, 15, look at it with me. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, there it is, when they saw Jesus, they were amazed. How long has it been, look at me, in your faith, how long has it been in your prayer life, in your church life, in your walk with God? How long has it been since you've been amazed by God? They were amazed. A lot of people come to church on Sunday morning. You know what it's like? A lot of people come to church on Sunday morning and it's just routine. You're not amazed. You're not amazed at what God can do. You don't even believe God can do it. I mean, I mean, you haven't prayed during the week for the service. You just come in with the attitude to bless me if you can. If you can't, I'll be the same when I go out and it'll be all right. I don't want to be the same when I come to church. I don't because I, I know who I am. And by the way, look at me. You know who you are. And I don't want to walk out of this church the same. Do you? I hope not. I want to be amazed at what God can do. And by the way, folks, He's amazing. But you've got to be prayed up. You've got to be ready to accept what God has for you. You've got to be willing in this faith walk to accept what God has for you. A lot of people's not willing because their prayer hadn't been what God wants them to be. So there was amazement. Listen to what he said in verse 15. Straightway all the people when they beheld him were greatly amazed and started running to him and greeting him or saluting him. They, they just wanted to be around him. So Jesus, you say, well, how could that be a problem? Well, not only did he run into the arguments, but he ran into the amazements. What does that mean? Well, sometimes in our lives, if we don't watch it, we will let these things be a, an interruption in our lives. This, this, this thing, you know, of always looking for amazement. There's so many churches, and, and God help me this morning. There's so many churches that that's all they go to church for. Is some kind of, I don't know, some kind. You know what, folks? There, I, I don't know whether you believe this or not, but there are churches in the world that they meet underground and they can't sing because they're afraid someone will hear them singing and kill them. You say, well, I, I just can't go to church without being amazed with the singing. I know it's going to get quiet right now. and You're probably going to get mad at me, but it'll be all right. I, I mean, just amazed with the singing. There's some places that they can't even sing. They don't even have books to sing. Because if they sing too loud, someone will come down and kill them. They meet in crowded areas with just pages of the Bible. Not the whole Bible, but just pages, just one page. And they memorize that page because that's all they have. Well, where's the amazement at, preacher? The amazement is when the Holy Spirit shows up. 
And that place gets electrified by Jesus Christ. And that's the amazement. That's what we've lost here in America, folks. We have lost the amazement of the Holy Spirit, Jesus showing up. You see, they gathered around him in this amazement and they wondered about him. They wanted to see what he was going to do. The perfect, sinless Son of God. What's he going to do? How's he going to take care of this situation? That's the way we ought to come to church. What's he going to do? <laughs> How's he going to take... What, what's going to happen? Instead of being worried about everything else, all we ought to be concerned about and pray about is what Jesus is going to do when we go to church. What the Holy Spirit's going to do. You ought to be excited about the Holy Spirit. And faith. And so they were excited. They, they wanted to know what he was going to do. They, they, they wanted to see what, what Jesus was going to do. You see, Jesus really, and I want to talk about this faith just for a moment. Goodness, Jesus really, what he's wanting to do here, it ought to be all about him anyway. How many believe that? It's not about me. But if we don't watch it, when Jesus starts, and that has killed a lot of things, if we don't watch it, when Jesus starts showing up, we take, we take the, you know, we're the ones that did it, and we're not. It's Jesus. So this faith puts Jesus back in his place of amazement. I'm amazed what he's done in my life. I'm amazed what he's done in my children's life and their husbands and my grand... I, I'm amazed. I'm amazed what these young couples that I married years ago, what God has done in your life. What, how God... It's not me. It's not the church. It's Jesus. I'm amazed. Aren't you amazed? We need to get in this faith... To, to grow our faith, we need to be amazed by Jesus. What He's done. Man, I could talk on that forever. But you know what? It's two till. I'm going to give you one more and then we're going to go and you can come back tonight. The interruption of asking. Look at verse 16. And he asks the scribes, he directs his next question to them, what question ye with them? You see, after the wonder of amazement and all this, Jesus asks a simple question. What in the world are you arguing with them about? What's so important that you'll throw out the window everything that God wants to do in you And you're arguing about it. What's so important that you just throw everything out the window as far as your, you know, you know, letting your life be hateful and jealous and I know I'm gonna step on your toes. Hateful and jealous and condescending and 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 critical and all these spirits that we let what in the world is it's happened to you that you've let this come into your spirit. And by the way, folks, Jesus will ask you. Now, I may not ask you because I may not know, but God knows everything. And He will come to you, whether it's in the night, whether it's at your house, whether it's at your workplace, and He'll say to you, Can you believe that you've allowed this? to come into your life and ruin what I'm trying to do. How many, how many know what I'm talking about? He's done it to you, hasn't he? Has he done, he's done that to you. You know what I'm talking he, he asks. He, he, he don't back up. <laughs> and he said this simple question, what are you arguing about with them? He knew already, but he just wanted them to say it. 
See, that's the way that he can get you healed from that if you omit it. And faith helps us do that. Admit that we've let something grow in us that shouldn't be there and it's ruining the power of our faith in our life. <laughs> he said, let's just get to the bottom of this. Uh, let's just find out what's going on. Let's look beyond all these interruptions and, and, and let's go to the deeper issues that really matter with these people. You see, if the enemy this morning knows your doubts and knows your fears, and he does, then what he's going to work on in your life, first of all, if you're going through a problem, he's going to work on the faith issue. That's what the devil does. I don't know what you're facing, but if you're facing something, the devil's right there working on that faith in your life. Somebody said, oh, I'm a Christian. I'll be happy all the time. Let me tell you something. You're a Christian, and he's your number one enemy. He's your number one, and he's going to try and ruin everything that God is doing in your life right now. And you need to understand that he's there to interrupt you. If you want this breakthrough faith this morning, if you want it, then right now, Listen, look, look at me. Right now, you need to focus on Christ. I want you to do that right now. I want you to focus on Christ in your life right now. How's your relationship with Christ? I'm not asking whether you're saved. I'm not asking you that. Because if you're saved and you know it, then you know you're saved. Now, I'm going to get to you that ain't saved in just a moment. But you that are saved, I, I want to talk to you just now. I, I want you... I want you to focus on the faith in your life right now. And I want you to be honest, and God will help you be honest. Is it strong or is it kind of weak? Do you have some power or are you kind of weak? Because your powerful faith will get you through whatever you're going through right now. I don't care what you're going through. Whatever you're going through, this powerful faith, if you'll understand and listen to God, He'll get you through it. He'll help. I promise you, He will not let you down. Even though the devil will try to make you think. But are there things in your life right now that you've allowed to come in? Interruptions to come in and it's keeping you from going through this thing you're going through. And by the way, that's probably the reason the Lord allowed it. Allowed you to go through what you're going through. Now listen, I'm not being mean or cruel. I'm just saying that's the way God works. And He grows us. But He will not. Ever, 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 never. He will not let you down. If I were you this morning, I'd run to this altar. I wouldn't even wait for the preacher to get done. I, I'd just come on and I'd say to the Lord Jesus Christ, here I am, I'm yours. I, I just give it all. I, I can't do this anymore like this. I just want you to take me over and empower me through your love and mercy. Give me faith that is empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. And He will hear your prayer. Would you come right now? Let's all bow our heads. I'm just going to ask you to step up.